right, we are beginning a new series on emotions and being emotional. And uh, this perhaps is one of the most emotional times. Of, thank you so much. The emotional times of the year. And, uh, and so I just wanted everyone to know that I was praying about you guys, and I asked the Lord often, God, what, what do you want me to share from your word? I just believe God would really have us focus on emotions this next several weeks as we're heading into, a lot of people call it the most wonderful time of the year, but for many people, it's not the most wonderful time of the year. In fact, uh, psychologists and doctors and behaviorists tell us that between Thanksgiving and New Year's is the highest rate of depression and the highest rates of suicide happen during this time, more than the rest of the year. All the, all the other months combined from, from Thanksgiving to New Year's. And, and even this past year with the, with the pandemic and all that, there's been, there's been some good news as well. I've been reading that some kids are doing well being at home. The parents aren't doing well, but the, the kids are doing well. But there are other people that are struggling through this time. And I read from the CDC this past week that the ages from 14 to 26, 25, I can't believe this, 25% of young people from 14 to 26 have contemplated, have thought about suicide. It's like, what? That's what the CDC said. So, you know, things are going on and, and people are wondering what's going on and, and, and Christmas is supposed to be a time of, of celebration. It's supposed to be a time of great emotions. It's supposed to be a time of greatness. And, and sometimes what happens when everyone else is happy and when everyone else is doing well and, and you don't feel that way, it's difficult. And so many times that Christmas can be a reminder of, of what's not Maybe it brings up the past. Maybe it brings up things you've been through, and, and, and it can be a difficult time for a lot of people. And so what does God say about emotions, and, and how do we handle emotions, and how do we act healthier during this time? Let me just say a couple things real quickly. First of all, you're not a bad person if you struggle with depression, if you're anxious. You know, sometimes we, we look at people as if they're bad because they're experiencing, come on, what's your problem? Come on, come on, come on, get, come on, get yourself up. And you're struggling and you feel like, what's the deal with me? You're not a bad person. You have to understand, everybody, that there's different levels of mental health. And I like to call it emotional health because mental health to me is a very negative connotation. It means mental. Oh, yes, that person's mental. I think it's a lot more accurate to say emotional health. That there are people that struggle with their emotional health, the levels of their emotions. And we're fearfully and wonderfully made. And, and you don't think someone's bad if they take insulin because they're diabetic. Now, if they're having donuts and cake and ice cream every day, yeah, you know, you might want to stop doing that. And maybe through diet and exercise, you might be able to get off of that. But there are some people that do everything right and still have to take insulin. I've known people that were healed from being a diabetic. Miraculously, I know those that they have to walk through it. I know people that have high blood pressure. They do everything they can, and, and they get better, but they still have to take medication for that. And my friends, there are people out there that struggle with their emotions, and they're on antidepressants or on special medications, and we thank God for those things. Are they overprescribed in some cases? Yes. Are they necessary in many others? Yes. And so there are people, it's good, it's good to go for counseling. It's good to do all the right things. But right off the bat, because when I talk about these things, people are strong, oh, great. He's talking about how I need to pull it together, how I need to smile. Listen, no matter what I'm going to say today, it works no matter where you are. Because the condition is, is God's word works. It really works. And, and what we try to do all the time is say, all you got to do is go to church. All you have to do is be on medication. All you have to do is exercise and eat well. You got to do it all. All truth is God's truth. And God has fearfully and wonderfully made us. And we live in a society today where, thank God for the medical um, that we've gotten. Many, many milestones have happened in, in recent years. We thank God for that. But I want to deal with emotions. And how do we deal with it? And I want to bring us to, first of all, to begin to look at the problems of emotions. Emotions are great, but emotions call problems. I don't know if you've noticed that, anybody. Have you noticed that emotion can cause trouble? Yeah, absolutely. I just want to, one second here, through our emotions. And I just wanted to remind you that the power of our emotions, I feel, demands to control us. Think about that. 
Your emotions, whether you recognize it or not, demands to control you. And it's one thing to think something, but it's a lot more power to feel it. Think about it. You can think about something all you want, but if there's no emotion, it's not going to really move you. What moves us to action is emotions. Not just facts and figures, but if you can get someone emotional about something, they'll move. And that's why the industry does that. The advertising industry tries to get a hold of your emotions. If they can get a hold of your emotions, they can get you to move. Emotions, emotions make you motion. Thoughts are great, but emotions are, bring motion. So the power of our emotions, I feel, demands a control. I feel this way, I feel the other way. Another one is, is most of our decisions are emotional and we use our logic to justify them. If you don't recognize this, you don't realize it. You have to be, be, be know thyself. Know yourself. Understand how you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Understand that you're emotional. No, I'm a, I, I use logic. I guarantee you. I guarantee you that you'll find an emotional, even if you're not an emotional person, you have feelings. And you, you say, I want to do whatever it could be. Let's say, how about, the one, how about this one, everybody? This, this gets me. You go into a showroom, and you see that car. You really can't afford it. You can break it into monthly payments for 120,000 months, and you can afford a Ferrari for that. And, and then your emotions are there. And then you find a way. Well, this is for my emotional health. People go skiing, people do these things, and so this car is gonna bring me therapy. And it's going to help me. And it's, you know, and you, yeah, not to say it's a wrong thing, but what will happen is you will begin to do, have an emotional goal. I want to be happy by having this car. I want to be happy by buying these clothes. I can't afford. I want to use my credit card and buy this. I want to go on this vacation because after all, everyone else is doing it. I need to be happy. So that's important, right? Happiness. And, and you equate that. So now let's try to find logic Oh, studies say that vacation is good for you. Studies say the most happy place on the earth is, is Disney World. And you start kind of lining it up. And you get all the logic you want to rationalize an emotional decision. We all do it. I do it. You do it too. Come on, let's be honest, everybody. We do it all the time. So most of our decisions are emotional. I learned in sales a long, long time ago. I used to sell books door to door in Texas during the summer. One summer I was in college to pay my way through. And uh, this is what they taught me. They said, listen, people buy by emotion. People make emotional decisions and they use logic to back it up. And you know what, my sales guy, he was absolutely correct. Now, 40 some odd years later, I would say he's absolutely, 10 years later. <laughs> he was absolutely correct. And the more I read about it, the more I study it, emotions control us. They really, really do. So most of our decisions are emotional and we use our logic to justify them. If you, if you don't understand that, that's a truth. You wanna write that one down and remember that. Anytime you wanna make a decision on something, you'll be very surprised how much your emotions control you in that area. Finally, in our first introduction here, our culture makes emotions more important than facts. It does. And it's gotten worse and worse over the last 10 years, after the last 100 years, actually, it's gotten worse. But I'd say in the last 15 to 20 years, it's gotten to the point now, uh, and people used to say, I think, therefore I am. Now it's, I feel, therefore I am. And people are saying that, uh, that there is no truth. Truth is, is, is not, is not, is objective, and it's based upon your point of view, how you feel. So if you feel a certain way, then that's the way you are. We've always told people all of our lives, it's the, it's the character that makes a person. No, 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 it's how you feel. How you feel is more important than your character. And our culture is telling us that all in all. In fact, I will tell you that the preamble of our Constitution and, and all of our national um, goals of our country God has endowed us, he's our creator, endowed us with certain rights, and that's true. But he's, there's something said there that's faulty. It says the pursuit of happiness. And happiness is based on happenstance, based upon what happens. So what has happened is our entire system, our entire United States of America, is based upon your personal happiness. And so the God of America is a God of happiness. 
a big smiling face. Like the Walmart when you go in, right? That's what it's all about. It's all about the smile. It's all about happy. I have to be happy above all. I'm not happy anymore, therefore I'm leaving. I feel, therefore I am. And now we're being told this over and over, and sometimes it even defies science. And people will begin to say, I identify who I want to be based upon how I feel. I feel this way. Well, I don't want to tell them they're wrong. Imagine, if you will, if you go to school and you say, and you're, you're a parent, and you're one of these progressive parents, and you believe your child should, should explore the, everything they want to explore, and my child needs to be, my child, what you want to be is what you want to be. And the child comes home and says, you know, mom and dad, the teacher says on the test, two plus two equals four, and I got it wrong. I said it was eight. Well, hello. How could your teacher do that? Eight is, eight is hate. She hates you because of eight. So go to the office and say, how dare you give my child fail the mouth test because it says two plus two equals four. He thinks it is eight. And you have eight. Eight is two plus, four, two, plus two. No, it's not. Yes, it is. In fact, I got a lawyer going to contact you tomorrow. My, my child is suffering emotional duress. My child is, gonna, is, is, is in danger because you have told them that two plus two is four when it's eight. Who are you? To, to him, it feels like eight. Right? Now, I wish I was making that up. That's not much different than what we see going on today. There are people saying all sorts of things. And now they're trying to pass laws that if you don't agree with somebody, it's a hate crime. Listen, I love everybody. If you want to be called a giraffe, I'll call you a giraffe. Okay, if you, if you think you're a giraffe. But, I, but if you ask me to say, am I really a giraffe? I'm going to say, no, you're not a giraffe. You call yourself a giraffe. No, and I'm not trying to make light of it, everybody. But the point is this. Our culture, it's all about feelings. I've heard so many times, while you're leaving your husband, I'm not. While you're doing this, I'm not happy. I'm not fitting in. I want to fit in. I want to feel I'm a part of the situation. And so our feelings, nothing more than feelings. That's all it's about. Feel, 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 feel. I feel, I feel. We have made the God of self at the throne of feeling. And let me tell you right now, it's a horrible place to be. And what we do is we, most of our decisions are emotional and we use logic to back it up. You see, we must live in truth. God, not feelings. Jesus did not die on the cross to make you happy. He died on the cross to make you holy. So you could be happy. I'm gonna tell you this right now. The pursuit of happiness is the pursuit of misery. If you go after happiness, you are chasing something unattainable. If you go after God, you will find happiness because God is the essence of everything. But if you go after the things of God instead of God himself, it's called a dialectry, and you'll not get there. And the problem with us, everybody, we're all guilty of this. And if we're gonna get healthy emotionally, we first gotta realize we have to change the boardroom. You're, the CEO of your life cannot be your feelings. Now, you still want the, you, 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 you got to make God the chairman, uh, God is the CEO. You might be the vice president, and the emotions are important. We'll have them on the board too. They're, they're on the executive team. But don't you dare put emotions as the CEO of your life, or you're going to be a complete wreck. And this is what our culture is telling us. They are denying, they call, talk about science. Science is the study of what God's created. We have theories and hypotheses, and you test, and I do this, and I attest enough times. Okay, it's true. But now people are denying science. It's two plus two because I feel. And what that comes down to is self idolatry. What it comes down to is the worship of self. It, and it's not good. We must live in truth, God, not feelings. This is what Jesus said. We did a whole series in this. I'm going to remind you. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the way. He's the truth. He's in the life. He's not a feeling. He is the way. You see, facts 
plus the love of Jesus equals truth. Facts by themselves may be true, quote unquote, true in the fact that they're accurate. But true truth is knowledge, rightly applied wisdom, if you will. Jesus is not, does not contain truth. He is truth. We talked about this. So really, what you need to ask yourself is no matter what you're doing, even if you're an atheist and you find a vaccine for COVID, guess who helped you get that? The truth, Jesus. Because he is truth. That's who he is. And so facts plus the love of Jesus equals truth. Not facts plus emotions and how I feel. I know we sing a lot of these songs about feeling. That's good. You need to have your emotions. Our emotions should be reflecting truth. But the problem, we'll get into that later on. Today, we're just going to open up with this. Truth is absolute and unchanging. Your feelings change. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So we have to get to the point in place where we believe that the truth is the truth. This is what Jesus said. He said to his people that believed in him, you are my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. Now, what do I put this in here for? Because we often quote this part, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We, we quote that, but we don't quote this part because this is, this is predicated upon this. That if you trust God and you listen to God and you say, you know, God is the great designer of the universe. God is your creator. God put all the molecules in space. God is the one that spoke and it was. He understands the beginning from the end. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. God knit you in your mother's womb. He set all the parameters, all the formulas out there. He is the great creator. He's the great architect. And when you understand that, he says, trust me. I know what I'm talking about. All right? And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The truth of Jesus Christ. And your emotions may color your thoughts, but they cannot be the truth. I know, but I feel like God loves me, so that's why I gave my life to Christ. Feelings are fine, everybody. Please understand. We're not saying feelings are bad, but feelings in the wrong context. Feelings are immaterial. Feelings are colors. It's like a box of crayons. Facts are the drawing, and we color it based upon our experiences. But we cannot let our what we have developed our emotions to tell us what we're, what's going through in our lives. See, the word of God is living, is active, sharpened two-edged sword, piercing the vision of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, soul and spirit. That's what we're dealing with. Soul is the mind, will, and emotions, and the spirit is a part that lives forever. The word of God goes right down there. Why? God's word speaks. God's word holds the universe together. If you study nature, you study animals, you study the stars, you study everything, you're going to see God in everything. The principles of God, the way he is, his character. It's like looking at a painting from Van Gogh. Oh, that's from Van Gogh. How can you tell? I can tell the style of it. And when you look through creation, you can see God's handiwork. And so his word is sharper. His word, he spoke and it came into existence. And we, if we think my feeling is more important than God's truth, you've got a problem there. So how do we let God transform our emotions? Whether you're clinically going through a difficult time in depression or you're just having the holiday blues. You're like, man, I don't know about you guys, but I read, the, <laughs> I read the New York Times feed this morning, the AP feed this morning. I used to do that. I shouldn't do that probably, but I did it. And they're talking like, oh my Lord, COVID is coming to land. It, the aliens from outer space are gonna come. It's, I mean, the way they're talking it is a bleak. The next few months are gonna be hell. I mean, I mean it's really morbid. And do we need to take precautions? Yes, but it's so stinking negative. Why? Because the media understands. If they tell you facts without emotions, you're not going to listen or read. But if they put a, a headline that evokes emotion, you're going to read it and you're going to click it and they get money. That's the problem. They want to get rich. Corporations. Now, I'm not a communist, okay? But I'm a realist. And the problem is, emotions make money. So, how do we let God transform our emotions? Let God be true, though everyone were a liar. You and I have to, first of all, give a life to Christ and recognize that God's word is supreme. It's above my thoughts, and it's above my feelings. My identity 
is not what I feel. If I listen to my feelings, I'd probably be in prison right now on two life sentences. I, I, I know who I am without God. You don't want to know me without God. My kids know a little bit. Sandra knows a lot. Let God be true, though everyone were a liar. You have to get to the point is, if my emotions do not line up to the truth of God, guess who has to change? Okay. So, settle that God, not our thoughts and emotions, controls us. You have to make that decision. But you have to come to the realization that your emotions have a tremendous control upon you. You have to understand that. Please understand that, everybody. I don't care how, how analytical, how cerebral you are. Maybe you think most of the time. I don't care who you are for your human being. You have emotions. You know, it's very interesting. You're doing a lot of experiments with AI, artificial intelligence. And what they're doing, they're, they're giving all these systems and formulas and how it can make um, simulated wisdom decisions. And often, artificial intelligence does not take emotions into consideration, and it will make different decisions. Humanity, they actually say that part of our intelligence is our emotions. That the reason why human beings can be great sometimes is that we combine our thoughts and our emotions, and if you have a healthy emotional balance that's connected to reality, it can be helping you make compassionate choices that AI can never do. But... Does it reflect the word of God? And so what we want to do is we want to transform our thoughts. Thoughts begin feelings. Feelings then run us in the subconscious level. So settle that God, not our thoughts, in emotions controls us. You have to settle that point. So we're always, in what Corinthians says, the Apostle Paul says, so we are always of good courage. Why? We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. So we're of courage. Why? Because he knows who he is in Christ. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. For, we must, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and he rewards those who diligently seek him. But I don't feel God. You may not feel God. I have no desire to read the Bible. I have no desire to forgive people. I have no desire to walk away from these things. Well, guess what? You don't have desire? Go after the right thing. And eventually the desire will come because you're created for God, by God, and your emotion will align up eventually because that's your design. I'm telling you, everybody. I'm telling you that's what's gonna happen. So many times that we're like that old that old illustration of a, an eagle in a chicken yard. Grew up with the chickens. And one day they see an eagle in the air and the, and the, and the eaglet goes out, you'll never catch me in one of those. We're created to soar. And when you, oh, this is what I'm created for. So God has created us. It might take a while to break out of that old pattern, but when you align yourself with God's truth, you want the emotions that God has given you to reflect the truth of who he is. And it happens through steps and training. Now, you might have heard this before. I'm, I'm a big fan of trains. When I was a little kid, I loved trains. Okay, just Christmas time. You know, so you have a train around the tree. You might have heard this before, but this is so good, I'm going to use it. You might have heard this. Facts is the locomotion, faith, and then you have feelings. It's all important. But what many people have done is they've made feelings become the locomotion. And they put, they put feelings number one, and they put facts way at the back. And this is what's happening in our culture. What's called wisdom is foolishness. What's called foolishness is called wisdom. How can cognitive, rational human beings that claim they like the scientific method make such choices that defy the imagination of wisdom? And this is what begins to happen. So you and I have to choose to walk in the facts. What are the facts? What is the truth, God's truth? Right? The word of God is, we, have to, we went through this last year. If you want to know how you can trust the Bible last year, it's online. Looking at it. We talked about how you can trust the Bible. Facts. And then your, your faith follows and your feelings come afterwards. Don't let the feelings hijack your life. In many ways, I guess you love my artistic work here. I tried. But in many ways, it, the, the yellow re represents the truth. The truth is constant and it's going to stay the same no matter what. God loves you. You're made in his image. God wants the best for you. He loves you. You know, all these types of things. 
Sin destroys you. This is the truth. But my emotions are like this. They're like a roller coaster ride at Six Flags. Right? They're up and down and up and down. What we often do, I make a decision based on how I feel. Oh, I should buy that car. I should go to that. I should date this person because they're good looking. My heart pitter pattered. Or the girl at the office winked at me and my heart pattered like crazy. And God wants me happy. I'm in a loveless marriage. Maybe I lost my soulmate. How can I say that? Because God wants me, come on, happy. And this is how it begins. So you make a decision when you're up. You make a decision when you're down. Don't let your emotions be the final factor. You base it upon the truth. Now, do emotions have a role to play? Yes, if they are connected to God's truth. Jesus had emotions. He got angry. He was sad. He cried. He wept. He was happy. He laughed. That's why he made me. He has a sense of humor. Okay? God has all those things. He does. But he makes his decision, not my will. He was in the garden. He was at the low at the low. Father, not my will be done, but yours. Sometimes you got to pick yourself up by the scruff of the neck and say, hey, self, I know I feel like trash, but courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is doing the right thing despite the fear. You may be the, some of the most courageous people I know, the people that struggle with depression and anxiety because they march through regardless. And maybe for you it's easy, but for them, listen everybody, doing the right thing is courageous. Doing the right things. You see, this is one of my quotes. Emotions can be wonderful servants, but are lousy masters. You want a life that's off the rails? Let your emotions control you. And, and sometimes, let me say this, sometimes within the full gospel churches, we equate emotion with spirituality. Well, I feel, almost like Star Wars, I feel a disturbance of the force. I sense in the room. Listen, this is the truth of the matter. God can speak through your mind. He can speak through your will. He can speak through your emotions. Some people, God speaks a lot clearer through their minds. Some people, God speaks through the emotions. What you got to do is you begin to learn. Sometimes God does speak through my emotions, and I feel certain things. I could tell you stories. There was a situation, well, I, I don't have time. There's, basically, I'll tell you the quick part of it. I sense like an anxiety and a foreboding, like something was wrong. I'm like, what the heck's going on? The family's fine. We got plenty, you know, everything's going great. And then I came back to church. I get a phone call from a parent saying, this is happening to my child. And as soon as I heard it, the anxiety left me immediately. I felt like the Lord said, this is serious. Take it seriously. And it was. So sometimes that happens to me. I'm like, God, can't you just say, look out for this guy? So sometimes I don't understand why, right? I don't understand why emotions. They're servants, but sometimes God can speak to us through our emotions, and that's fine. But do your emotions line up with God's truth? Do you follow me, everybody? So we worship emotions in the charismatic, Pentecostal, full gospel church. Oh, I feel, I feel. And, and that's nothing wrong with that. God can speak through your feelings. He can speak through your body. He can speak through your mind. He speaks through circumstances, but he speaks primarily through Scripture. And if it doesn't line up with Scripture, it's not the Word of God. It's probably whatever you ate last night. Settle that God, not our thoughts, and emotions control us. Emotional health begins with an attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving. So you want to change your emotions. We talked about some realities this morning. Now we're talking about how we change. Number one, settle. God is your essence of your decision-making, not your emotions. Number two, emotional health begins with an attitude of gratitude. We're going to begin here today. It's one of the foundation stones. You want to change your emotions and get them healthy. Be thankful. I struggle with this. I'm from Long Island, New York. I'm, I'm a sarcastic New York kid. I was the guy in the back of the class that made, I mean, I shouldn't say my kids are over there, but I, I'd make a lot of little jokes about people and say things and people would laugh and all that. So how do we change? How do we get, how do we change this? How do we get our emotional help? It begins with an attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving. Well, how do you get thanksgiving? It's by this. Lower your expectations by raising them. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, right? Lower your expectations by raising them. What is that supposed to mean? I'll tell you what it means. Jesus says it very clearly. In this world, he says, <laughs> in this world, you're going to have tribulation. If you think life's easy, Wake up. Life's not easy. This is not heaven. 
okay? Imagine you're going to Disney World. That's your objective, and you get your family in a, if you're cool, you get them in an SUV. If you're more pragmatic and practical and spiritual, you go in a minivan. And you're going, you're going your way to Florida, and you stop at a rest stop that has like Mickey Mouse all over the place. And you go in there, and they have lousy food and dirty bathrooms, and you're like, oh, they have a gift shop with Mickey Mouse. We've arrived. No. It's on the way. And we're on a way. We're making an arrest stop heaven. No wonder we're depressed. Have you seen the restrooms and the rest stop? <laughs> right? What this world has to offer, this is not heaven. And if you think it is, you're going to be depressed, and you should be depressed. And I'll join you. This isn't heaven. And if you think it is, you're going to be depressed. In this world, you will have trouble, Jesus says. And if Jesus says you're going to have trouble, you're going to have, come on, we hear it loud, nice and loud. Put it online. Come here, to me here. I want to hear trouble one more time. Come on. All right, you're going to have trouble. Praise the Lord. Aren't you excited? I'm being emotional. Okay. In the world, you will have tribulation. But take heart. I have overcome the world. I'm preparing a place for you. It's the truth when I say we don't work for victory. Christ has done it. We work from victory. So no matter how bad it gets, the best days are always ahead. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. For the joy set before him, Christ endured the cross. So how do we find joy? How do we manage? How do we hit the big reset in our emotions? Well, first of all, give your life to Christ. Say, say to yourself, emotions are not my determination. God's word is. Rejoice always. How do I do that? Rejoicing is a choice. You don't wait to rejoice. You rejoice when you don't feel like it. That's being hypocritical. No, it's not. Because what you're doing is you're aligning your emotions to the truth. The truth is, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. I will enter his courts with praise. I, I was designed to worship God. And right now, my design is all miswired. But if I will force myself to worship God, to, now listen, you, you still need to deal with some stuff. I can't, but generally speaking, you say, I'm going to worship God because he's worthy of worship. Even if I don't feel it. Now, if you have issues, we have to deal with those issues. Please understand. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing, which simply means be God consciousness all the time. God's with me. Give thanks in all circumstances. It didn't say give thanks for circumstances. Oh, praise God, I just chopped my finger off on the buzzsaw. Oh, praise God, I just bounced another check. Oh, praise God, I've been divorced. Divorce papers have been handed to me. No, I'm not suggesting that. But finding the good, like Corey Tamboon did in the Nazi concentration camp. These Dutch girls and their family used to hide Jewish people on the walls of their house. Great book called The Hiding Place. And Betsy, I think in her name of her little sister, said, I, I thank God for the fleas that are biting us. Because the fleas are biting us, the prison guards won't come in. And they're not taking us to the gas chamber because of the bugs are biting us. So they thank God for the fleas. Can you imagine? Amazing, right? Thanksgiving is an antidote. It's a great antidepressant. It's a great mood stabilizer. It sets you up and it opens the doors for the peace of God to flow in you and transform you little by little or all at once. Rejoice always. Pray without saving. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Thank you, Father, that I'm going to heaven one day. Thank you, God, for my family. Begin to write down. They, they did a study. Uh, I just read a case study where they took a client 15 minutes a day for two weeks would write for 15 minutes a day what they're thankful for and their mental health got better. Happiness, gratefulness actually improves your immune system. You are designed to be grateful and happy. How many of you like whining kids? How many like whining kids in the back of a car when you're trying to drive and you're lost? Okay? All right. God doesn't like it either. Are we there yet? This guy, Moses, I don't know about him. And because they complained, a whole generation of people had to wait 40 years 
They died and didn't get the promise because they were complaining and having a negative attitude instead of believing the word of God and letting their emotions go there. It's okay to be fearful, but march into the right, righteousness of God. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus, let us offer God acceptable worship with reverence in awe. And so sometimes I have to, you know, it's almost like, you ever try to pull a lawnmower engine? And you're sitting there, and it's just not working. You put a little, you know, you hit the choke, you try to do it. Sometimes worshiping and telling God good things is like pulling that cord. And eventually, the spark's going to hit. And you're going to fire up on your cylinders because you're designed by God for God. God designed you to be happy. He designed you to be rejoice. He did. And so if you do these things, you're aligning yourself up to your creator. You're aligning yourself up to your original design. And you will begin, even if you have really bad mental health and you're struggling, it will help you. We have to stop either or. It's fruits. No, it's vegetables. No, it's meat. It's all of it. Even sweets. Praise the Lord. An attitude of gratitude is one of the foundation stones of spiritual and emotional health. Hands down. And I want to just show you. We often quote this passage of scripture and we get angry and we get right in the face. Talk about this, this, this society that we're going through and what's going on and God's wrath is poured upon mankind. Let me show you the wrath of man and the wrath of God. I want you to read this. There's some, there's some key elements in this particular passage of scripture that all of us are guilty of at one time or another. And the condition of mankind right now is based upon some things that are not being done by humanity. And if you don't give thanks to God and honor God, insanity becomes a condition of a society where a society can do un unconscionable things that defy science, defy logic, defy, defy civility. Here it is. For the wrath of God, in other words, going against what God has, which is going to cause a lot of friction, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all all, not the ones we don't struggle with, all, include selfishness, all, ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth by doing other things. I'm not going to listen. No, 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 I'm not going to listen. No, I'm not going to listen, God. And we put our fingers in our, in our ears and we begin to hum a different tune. I don't want to hear what God is saying. I'm going to sing my own song, right? So what does it say? They do what? The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them. Listen, everyone knows there's a God. No, they don't. Yes, they do. How can you say that? Because the Bible says it. Now, you may deny it long enough where you don't care anymore, but it's utterly insanity to say that there's no God. I talked about this many times. A nail truck, a steel truck, and a wood truck crash on Route 70. And miraculously, it all fell together and built this building. Actually, over a period of millions of years, the, the steel got legs and came up. Come on, everybody. Hello. Of course there's a great creator. How insulting to say there is not. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. Everyone knows there's a God. And that's why I don't, get, I don't get bent out of shape. I don't believe in God. Well, that's okay. There is a God. He loves you. You're made in his image, whether you like it or not. For what his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. So they are with that excuse because everyone knows there's a God. For although they knew God, they may not know who Jesus Christ is at this point, but there's got to be a great creator. They, even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God. In other words, I don't care what you say. It's like going to a restaurant and putting your feet up on the table and eating and, and you know, just doing whatever you want to do in a fancy restaurant. You can't do that. We come into God's world. This is, I'm going to do whatever I want. No, God has standards. So although they knew God, they did not honor him. That's not honoring God. Honoring his creation. That's right. We should take care of creation. We should not throw trash out of our windows and all that kind of thing. That's kind of honoring. I look at that as honoring God. I look at it honoring God taking care of animals, taking care of people, caring about the unborn, caring about those that are being mis mistreated in society, caring about those that feel like they're being mistreated in society. That's honoring God because I'm honoring his creation, right? So though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give what? Or give what? Okay, so here we have it. So God reveals himself to people. They don't honor him. 
by doing what he, should, what he asked to do, and they're not thankful. What's the ramifications of not honoring God and not being thankful? You want to know what the ramifications is? I don't have time today. Read the rest of, of, of Romans chapter 1 and 2. Although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. Okay, what happened as a result of not honoring God and giving thanks to him and having an attitude of gratitude? What happens? But they became futile in their thinking. If you don't honor God and you're not thankful, your mind will become futile, your emotions will become futile, and you'll be so twisted, more than a pretzel. Here, here we go. But they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. Can we not see that today? Hello? They want to pass laws in the Netherlands that you could be arrested if you don't call someone what they said they are. Parents are losing their kids because the kids are confused at age eight. Listen, I'm not going to get to all that right now, but this is what's happening. Like a school psychologist that spends 30 minutes with kids knows your child better than you that you spent all these years with them. Hello? Claiming to be wise, they became fools. Oh, I can sleep with whoever I want to sleep with. It doesn't make a difference. You don't need to be married. I can just do what I want. I don't need to forgive that person. And you see what? Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man. What's the images? We have images of success in our society. If you want to be successful, you got to dress, you got to wear this, date this, go to this school, do this kind of job, right? Live in this type of neighborhood. So, the glory of immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up to the lust of their hearts. God says, okay, you, you, you just kicked me out. Now you're on a spiral of destruction. Because you have unplugged yourself from all wisdom, all knowledge. You're not giving thanksgiving. Thanksgiving opens a conduit to heaven. Thanksgiving opens a conduit to mental and spiritual health. Therefore, God gave them over to the lust of their hearts, to impurity, to dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. Because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie. And it didn't give thanks and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonor dishonorable passions. He goes on and on. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do ought what not to be done. It says they are inventors of evil. My friends, if you read Romans chapter 1, you're going to read what you see in the news today. But it all starts right here. Didn't honor God or give thanks. So before we criticize the world for doing things you're not doing that you wish you could do. Here's what I found. I got to stop happening with my watch. Why not go back and ask God a question? God, am I honoring you? Am I thankful for what God has done? Am I thankful for my children? Am I thankful that I can read them story, still read stories? Am I thankful that I can drive them to school? Am I thankful that I have my wife that I can talk to? Am I thankful for this wonderful church that I get an opportunity to share something that will outlive me? It's called the Word of God. Why not thank God? I get clothes on my back. I overeat, and I can do it. I wish I couldn't, but I, I, I think about it. It's a blessing, right? Think about what's good. Thank you, God, for what you've given me. Yeah, we're in the middle of COVID, but I thank you in the middle of this difficulty. There's a, there are opportunities to draw closer to my family. There are opportunities to read more books. There's opportunities to, re, to reinvent church. And, and, and Lord, what do you want us to do in the future of our church? We can't meet like we want to, but what are we supposed to do, God? God, thank you. In the middle of all this, you're doing something. I don't know what's going on, but in the middle of it, I'm going to thank God. And Paul and Silas were beat up, and they began to worship God around midnight. Although they knew God, they did not honor God. So God gave them over. And so this is what began to happen. Listen, everybody. The beginning of mental health is to understand that God is God and you're not. The beginning of mental health is to listen to him, honor God, and have thanksgiving. That begins the process we're going to be talking about in the next several weeks about how you and I can be emotionally healthy 
by being rightly connected to God that our emotions reflect the truth of God in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And I'm going to ask the worship team to make their way up as we conclude our time here today. And I'm going to ask you guys a question before we do that. Have you actually given your life to Jesus? The only way you're going to have true emotional health, or health in that in general, is to be connected to the creator of all heaven and earth. That heaven, that this is, earth is so temporary. One day, you're going to have to stand before God and give him an account for your life. And the truth is, you don't have what it takes, and neither do I. But Jesus has what it takes. He died on the cross for you, took your punishment, and said, follow me. I broke the ice. Now you get behind me, and I'll get you where you have to be. If you've never given your life to Jesus, today's a day of salvation. He's not asking you to get it all together. He's just asking you to surrender and say, God, I, I, I resign from being in charge of my life. And I believe you're the son of God and rose again from the dead. If you'd like to give your life to Christ for the very first time, I'm going to pray a prayer right now. For those that are watching at home as well, you can do this right now. Go ahead, bow your heads or whatever you want to do. Maybe you can say, I'm giving my life to Christ. Just pray right now. If you pray this prayer from your heart, go ahead. Lord Jesus, to follow after me. Lord Jesus, in your own mind, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for rising again from the dead. God, you paid for all of my sins. Today, I step down from being in charge of my life. I tell you right now, this is not my life. This is your life. Take my life. It is yours. I ask you to forgive me of everything I've ever done wrong, known and unknown, based upon the payment of what you did, which is enough. Thank you that I am now forgiven and that I am now a child of you. Come fill me now in Jesus' name.